the, yeah, they were they were there. So the the see. neighbors have parties to watch yeah, from their places. Exactly. That's well, awesome. Well, yes, the, the, they do. <laughs> that is fun. The yeah, choice was, very you know, true. I, I did my little code. I said there's gonna be a sound barrier at 5:23 in the Fills Valley. She sent back like Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know the code. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's it's hard for me not to say it, but this is the best year. <laughs> it's, it's it's more than a hobby. <laughs> it's I'm not an sure. Obsession. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I even said to him that first time when he told me about the lights. I said, "Has anybody told me told you that you're OCD?" And he says, "What's OCD?" And I said, "You." I just gotta say, can you let me out at least for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We get back inside and go and visit just a little bit. And all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. You can keep that for me. Christmas is all about family, and that's what this video will be about. But I thought it'd be fun to show you where the reindeer landed this year. They're up on our brand new chicken run roof this year. I think maybe they like grazing on the pine cones that have landed up there. If you think about it, this roof is probably particularly inviting for Santa's reindeer. They get to hang out with our goats and our chickens. Plus, it's very important to note that the Christmas lights are situated below the roof so they're not a tripping hazard. It's December 4th, 2021, and I've come out here to my dad's place for the official lighting of the lights this year. It's a little misty rainy out here, so I'll probably have to come back out to, uh, to get some good shots of the lights at night on a drier day. Plus, Dad has a friend, a neighbor, I think, who owns a drone, and we're going to see if he can't come out and maybe get some flying shots around here. I think that'd be pretty cool. We're still facing a pandemic this year, so the Lighting of the Lights party is going to be very, very small this year. Usually with my dad, it's standing room only. He's got family and friends and former co-workers and friends of friends. It's just, uh, he's a very social guy and everybody likes to come out and support dad's obsession with the Christmas lights. Don't let dad know that this is a video about him. He is absolutely adamant that the Christmas lights are about the community and the true story, the Christian story, the reason for the season for Christmas. Still, Dad puts a lot of work into this and everybody does appreciate it. Ho, ho, ho! 
Hey, How's Brian. everybody doing? You doing a little video one? I am. Oh, hello. Hi, <laughs> Mom. Hi. Oh, you're wet. <laughs> yeah, it's a little cold and wet out there. What's up, Brian? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I have hey, a Jack. I like you, but I'm stuck in this chair. It's right? really hard to get out. <laughs> So it was dad's idea for me to do a video of the lights because people who can't come out this year to appreciate the lights in person can at least get a virtual experience. They can participate a little bit. Well, plus, you know, like Fred Sturgis over in Libby, Montana, mm -hmm. he always talks about it. So there's several neighbors that uh, are looking forward to this because they saw the video that was done in 2015. Yeah. And so I think it's just kind of neat that that means a lot to them. Uh, if they can't be here, they'd like to see it. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to do it. Yeah. Well, that was one of my questions. I wanted to know who you're interested in sending the video to and maybe if there's anybody you want to actually say hello to. Well, not really because it's, you know, the, the lights are not necessarily to be focused on me. It's just one of those things that's you know, part of Christmas. So, you know, it, it's nice to be able to have people see it if they want to see it. But I don't, I don't want to give the impression that, hey, you know, hey, look what I've done. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not it at all. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it has been, it's been, I guess, 50 years. You're 51, and I've put up lights ever since, even before you. So to me, um, I guess my Christmas really is um, the Christ and the, you know, going to the, the candlelight service and stuff like that, and then coming home, uh, and then seeing the lights. It seems like it always comes together. Mm -hmm. Plus, I think it's really funny, uh, maybe being a little bit of a fuss budget, is that if I see something out there that's not working, <laughs> I cannot not fix it up to Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And then after Christmas Day, I go, hey, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably important to say that everyone at the party was vaccinated for COVID-19. And so far, the new Omicron variant that everybody's worried about. We haven't had a single confirmed case in Oregon yet. Uh, this is good. Yeah, just, we'll just talk to each other and look at the camera, whatever you want to do. This is Steve Stedman, a really longtime family friend. How long have you known Dad? It was uh, about January of 1972, so that's... Uh, that would have been two years old. Getting close to 50. Yeah. <clears throat> and my first experience with Mr. Grimes and his Christmas lights, he and Linda decided to go to Hawaii and he left up all the lights on their house. And since we live right across the street, and some of the neighborhood kids started to steal the bulbs, it was left to me to take down all of these Christmas lights. So that was, you know, that was the start of it all. That's a good story. That's a good story. Years ago, yeah, and literally, he had a lot of lights out then too, but nothing like, uh, nothing like the last few years. Now, I was trying to figure out when Dad really started the Christmas, the real Christmas light tradition. And I guess it was, he always did some lights. Yeah, in, in Eugene, when we lived in Cardinal Valley, yeah. there was, you know, there was probably, I don't know, eight or ten strings up. <clears throat> I don't recall any inflatable Santa Clauses or, or the reindeer or anything like that. But there were, there were enough lights that, that we noticed. Because we were right across the street, so I didn't have to worry about putting out a whole lot because we had them right across the street. There you go. There you go. It was good. Yeah. And uh, 50 years later, it's uh, mushroomed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What keeps you coming back out here every year? Is it, well, is it mostly just to see, see Dad, or is it really the Christmas lights, or is it the holiday season traditions? It's all of the above. Yeah. Uh, we live now in, in Sun River, so for several years we have not been able to make it across the passes. Uh, snow and ice and all that sort of stuff. So uh, here at the pig farm, we've only been here maybe three or four times at Christmas time. Yes. So we, we missed out on it a lot. It's a little better every year. So it's fun to come back. Plus, I come up and see your, your dad to play golf. This is Russian Not an option right now. But uh, it's just, uh, it's a nice getaway. Now, 
We call this the pig farm because the previous owners had pigs and started raising them in the house as well as being outside the house. So there was a certain smell when he bought the house that <laughs> Kathy noticed. And uh, so pig farm kind of stuck. Well, and that's probably close to 35 or 40 years ago now. You know, so it's, yeah. It's, yeah it, uh, it's got a history, mm -hmm. which is good. Histories are always good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Brian. I thought you, was that you were going to turn this side this way, way, and so that side was showing no, there. No. Oh, not so. No, I, I said no. we will both be this no. way, that and Steve will be there. I mean, Steve's like not in way. this. Oh, he's, he's not, not in it. He's been there, done it. Oh, okay. Did you leave that, that on? It is oh, all right, right now. <laughs> this, these are for outtakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Are you going to okay. interview us? Oh, okay. This is my mom. You've seen her before in our videos. Cheers. This is Judy Stedman, the wife of the gentleman you saw earlier. No. Why don't you tell me one of you or one of you or the other the story of how you guys became friends? It was the the story I've heard a lot many years ago. About me in the window. Oh, you have to tell oh, that part. The but that's yes. half of the how we have to be friends. Stories. Yes, I'll tell the other half. So we live next door to each other in Eugene. And you were about nine months old. Well, maybe 18. 18 months? Well, he was standing at the window of the baby. So nine months is a good I don't like it. He's advantaged. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, you were just little. You were a little tight. <laughs> and you used to bang on the window when you would see them. And so that that was how we kind of got acquainted with each other because you're the one that was instrumental in um, getting us together. Nice. Nice. But then what I was talking about too then was that our friendship goes back now. That's 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Almost. <laughs> 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 A couple of people that have, you know, I talked to at the party have mentioned the, the story about when I was maybe about two years old. We can't, couldn't quite decide how old I was, but we were living right next to Steve, Steve and Judy's bed. Yeah. And, and I want you to tell your version of the story of how you guys became friends because oh, of what well, I was doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you were walking, and um, so how I guess it started is you decided to go behind the drapes and look out the window. And that's just something you did. And then all of a sudden, you went through a stage of going out there and then banging on the window. Mm -hmm. Well, we just let you bang, I think, or something like that at first or, or whatever. But maybe after several days or several weeks of the same thing, I mean, you know, is that we found out that you were waving at Steve Stedman coming home from work because he worked uh, a graveyard shift or something like that for a television station. And so that's how we actually met Steve and Judy Stedman was him just waving at you coming home from work and you were banging on the window but if we let you bang on the window, you know, a little bit. I mean, before we all got, what is going on? Mm -hmm. And open up the drapes and, you know, there's Steve waving at you. And, nice. and, and, and now, I mean, Steve and Judy, 
Well, so you're born in 1970. So let's just say even 72. Been long time friends, yeah. you know, since it. You know, what I'm doing here on this YouTube channel may be just exactly the same thing. I'm banging on the window saying, come on over, let's be friends. And then I think the other thing that's beautiful about that too is that there's two other couples, you know, John Nolan and Barb, and at that one time it was Gail, and then Roger and Vicki Clark. This bond uh, ended up being nicknaming the Black Butte Buddies. It's really mm -hmm. kind of funny how each one of us ran into each other, and then when you end up having a 50 plus year friendship. Pretty, yeah. kind of, pretty yeah. amazing, you know, pretty amazing. <laughs> we live closer now. Since we were in Eugene, yeah, that's right. And I think we get together. No, almost. I mean, yeah. 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 We're, we're both retired and we're yeah. And our birthdays yeah. are ten days apart in December. Yeah. Bless us. Yeah. Yeah. We're December babies, and we have the hardest time. Mom's birthday is Christmas Eve. <laughs> See, when we lived in Salem, I loved. My birthday because oh, everybody was is so it? Um, that I had a family yeah. on Christmas Eve. So yeah. my birthday was. So, so what made you decide to go? go? But then everybody sort of left and had their own thing. And then the mountain was in the way with the snow. Yeah. 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 And so it's not as fun as it was anymore. Oh, oh, my no, I really missed. Oh, man. Well, it's nice that Dad has the Airbnb no, out there in the out. barn that he built. Yeah. Right. So you guys can come out here and stay. It's safe. Right. You don't have to go back in you know, a long drive in the middle of the night over right. a mountain. So it's, it's super good. Yeah. 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 So anyway, thank you, Airbnb. Thank you. <laughs> and Brian. <laughs> yes, and Brian. Special guy. Thanks. Absolutely. So this is Susan. Hi. She actually helped Wendy and I buy our place. I was a realtor. Absolutely. Michael's house. Yes. And she has a wonderful story to share about Dad's Christmas lights and how it was actually he is, I think, about the Christmas lights. <laughs> He's pretty serious about them. Mm -hmm. So actually, the first story that I was told Brian I'd tell is it was actually the first time I met him. He took me to an Italian restaurant, and he said, "Well, hey, you know, do you like Christmas lights?" And I said, "Yeah, I love Christmas lights." And he goes, "Well, let me show you my house." And so he drove me out to the house, and at that time, it had all the lights on the outfit. It was stunningly beautiful. I couldn't believe it. So then the next year. I said, well, can I help you put up your lights? And he goes, well, no. And he started to tell me all these stories about why I couldn't help. And I said, come on, i got to be able to do something. I'll be there, you know, 2 o'clock Thursday, whatever it was. So I arrived, and we went out into the barn, he calls it, in the workshop, on a gigantic workshop bench. And it had all of these um, cords of light strands all draped all over the tables. I mean, I don't know how many. Hundreds of them. This time of year, I have to keep in the back of my mind that I can't use the wood shop because Dad has it just covered with Christmas lights, and there's no way I can I can use the space. No, and then he t and explained to me how, in order to have those all laid out, he heats them up so that he can lay them and they'll lay flat. I thought, oh my God, this is really serious. And then I said, okay, well, how can I help you? And he had boxes. I can't even tell you how many boxes, little square boxes. And he opens it up, and they were the bulbs that go into all of these strands of lights. Screw light bulbs. Yeah. And I said, oh my God. And he said, well, you can put those in um, if you want. And I looked at him and said, you've got to be effing kidding me. You don't leave them in. And he says, he looked at me like, what do you mean? Why would I do that? And I said, why do you do that? And he said, because I change the color pattern every year. That's Stephen. That is classic Stephen. Most people would have said, well, because I don't want him to get broken, or I don't want him to get, you know, damaged water. And, nope, because I change the pattern every year. Every year, Dad does new things with his Christmas display. This year, 
the Christmas flags are new. And the other thing, too, is that I never like doing the same thing. You know, it would be boring. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And so as I look at things, I always start thinking about, you know, this would look good this year. I mean, the colors, you know, the contrast. But the, the, the disappointing thing about putting the lights up is, is the product itself. I spend, you know, whatever I need to spend each year to do what I'd like to. But I have to replace the color blue. I, I really, the, in fact, is the blue, when they see the photos, they'll see the blue. It's not as blue as it was last year. And the, U, the UV rays just faded so bad. So Goodwill gets at a place from 24 to 96 strings a year. Mm -hmm. So I'll buy typically 24, 48, because you know, it comes up. 96. I've actually bought that many strings in the recycle. And I have. Right after that, Christmas? Or are you doing yeah, I'd say take, take them down, and you know, that's another way that I check things are working. So I take every string down, and as I take it, I wrap it in my arm, and I look at each one. And if, if it even has one light out, I put one, I put everything in the twist ties. I leave only one twist tie on that string, and that when I go back through them, I say, okay, that one I know I have to go through. So I basically um, want everything to work when I put it out, but just as it goes, it's funny. There's certain things just fail, uh, and I don't have time to go back. So I set them aside, but they have one twist tie on them. It's just one of those things that I'm disappointed in the blue this year because it has more, it's enough white. I'd really like to have that really more deep blue. royal blue, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And now the blue, he didn't, even though the blue ones that he had were still okay for the color of the blue that that bulb was, he bought all new blue because he wanted a different shade. Okay. And there were hundreds of those that he bought all new of. And it, it's just what he does for Christmas. He has a little golf cart. Yeah. And he has big boxes, and they're all organized, of course. And he has extension cords that are green and brown and all these different colors. And they're all taped up with little wires like you put in twisties in the Twist grocery ties, store. Yeah. 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 And he knows all of the feet that those cords are. And then he has minis and it's just quite organized and quite a big deal. And then he has all these big, you know, I don't know what you call them, but they're the thing that you like plug into the socket. Yeah, and you can the put splitters more. or whatever they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can put more plugs in them. <laughs> So uh, I'm in the golf cart, and it's pouring rain, it's freezing cold, and he's outside, and he'll yell to me, throw me an 8, or throw me a 12, or throw me a, and they're all the different color codes, and then throw me the certain size of the different connection thingies, and so I'm in the golf cart, and I'm throwing these things out of it to him, and then he's running all the cords and plugging everything in. Holidays. The fireworks. There is a story about you being scolded officially about doing your fire and these fireworks are not technically legal, but really this is the safest time of year anybody could shoot off fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, but go ahead and tell that story. Well, I think what's interesting uh, about even how the idea came is um, the longtime friends, the Schmitz and the Olsons, when I just kind of started, you know, we had this little get together and I turned the lights. And I, like anybody else, probably had a sparkler or something, you know, that we should have some way to kick off the lighting of the lights, you know? And uh, I don't know where, how I even got, I, I still don't remember 
how I got all the fireworks that I got and from where, whether it's Oklahoma or some Indian reservation, but you know, they, they, I ended up having them here. But it's funny is it just started by, well, there should be some kind of kickoff, you know? And I remember as a kid, we were legal then, you know, having fireworks and all that. And I just came up with the idea that, well, we should have a fireworks of some type. But it's really interesting, the fireworks we have right now, you know, is the light of the lights of the neighborhood uh, expects them. Um, I don't even let off fireworks on the 4th of July. I only let off fireworks at Christmas, which wet and everything else and being reasonable. And it's a whole idea is that we're bringing in the season. So just to go and turn on lights, would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's like having music. I could have I could have the music going, playing loud, and kick on the lights or whatever. Yeah. But it's just a matter of, you know, it's just a, a fun event, and it's like you know we have people over for the you know the what we call the light of the lights, and uh, they can have a cocktail or you know whatever, and we visit. And I have friends that other people and uh, other friends have met. They now we see you only see there once a year. But I've done this for thirty six years here and before is that anybody who comes, they know the other person. Mm -hmm. And they only talk. They say, so I can be a guest at my own function, mm -hmm. sneak out, kick on the lights a little bit, or uh, fireworks. You know, there's probably seven to ten minutes of fireworks, and then all of a sudden, the lights come on. Maybe it, it, not having any skill, maybe that's like just a, a photographer or making a movie. You know, you have something that leads up to it, mm -hmm. you know? And but I think the what you're talking about is uh, after 35 years, I never had a policeman in the world come up, you know, and I found out later that he was actually down at the end of the road, and when they were done, came up. Okay. And um, this is a police officer yeah, who's waiting for the yeah, waiting for the he, he, I mean, he was obviously curious or whatever, mm -hmm. and and but he but he came up, and after I was done, there were a few minutes, and I'm driving the golf cart back up, and he, he puts on his siren right there, and I go. And he says, I've heard, uh, we, you know, I, well, obviously he saw that you've been having some fireworks, sir. And I said, yes, I have. He says, are you done? I said, yes, sir, I am. He says, good. And he drove off. But he, <laughs> he kind of he kind of scolded me, which he did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think he also realized, and this is where I would hope the world would be more so than it is today, is that he read the situation mm -hmm. and made a decision. That's the first time, that's the first time ever an officer has been here uh, on that. And I, I just knew it was going to happen at some time. But, uh, you know, I was never going to say, yep, I, I, that's exactly what I've been doing. Fireworks? Who? This is my son, yes, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Hi. 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 How are you? Remind Good me of you. your name again? Brian. Brian, yes. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just doing a video about Dad's lights. We're going to put something up on YouTube. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, very, yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, no, we were watching the game and we could and, and we try to look out the window. Mark, but the Mark game went was out too on the exciting. track and watched. And we watched out the window. Well, once in a while we'd break away or peek out. Yeah, you know, there's always a first. You know, something doesn't work. Or this, this year I had, uh, they're called cakes. And there's like 16, you know, 24, 36, you know. So I set, set them all up. And when they're all done, I saw this one cake. And it had this, because it has a, a uh, paper cover over the type. Oh, yeah. And I said, uh oh, that didn't go off. Oh. And so, as usual, I always you know, disconnect the trailer and everything else. Anyway, I was checking all the lights, came back up, and it was on fire. Oh. And oh, so no. I lifted the trailer, little, little cart, and dumped it out, and I kicked it over real quick. Got no noise, gonna blow up. Anyway, I said, I guess it's okay. We get back inside, I go and visit just a little bit, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? That's and a go, reaction. Oh, and I boy. said, I'm glad I kicked it up, because who knows if that thing was going to go straight at the house. So, But there's, <laughs> always, you know, there's no matter what I do, I try to make it perfect and do a dress rehearsal. Everything's going on. And then the lighting of the lights, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, you know. Oh, I mean, man. I you know, I'll eventually get straightened out. But Fine it's, tuning. <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of funny. It's just a tradition saying, OK. And it's like, even when I put them away, I always get a kick out of it because I'm pretty disciplined about everything. Oh, yeah. I'm sure as shooting, I'll be out trimming the tree and it's a arch or something. I got just, ah, well, there's a card. Oh, there's a, you know, yeah. there's, there's this little tea. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but I, I, that's right. 
Oh, you were walking. Yeah, you guys were walking. You saw all that stuff that goes oh, in the yeah, cart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because every, every one of these bushes has to have its own cord to it from the main line. And so I start putting out the main line on November 1st. And I kept seeing him on each one of the plugs, like they had three prongs on them. And then he takes another, you know, like you buy at the store in your bathroom and you put them in and you put three plugs in them. And then he plugged those in all three of the, those things. And I said, well, aren't they going to blow? I don't understand how they don't blow. But anyway, he he's spent... He's got it all figured out so that he doesn't max out any of the circuits. And he added extra circuits. So he's he's got it mapped out for exactly what the place can hit. Exactly. The other thing that bugs the heck out of me is the color blue gets so challenged by the UVs that oh. I try to put the blue color up last, but it's still, I can only get maybe two years at the very most. In fact, I'm not really happy with the blue on the second year because oh, it really? fades so much. So, yeah, it's just. That's interesting. Well, I know that. Um, Tina Flint, they had a whole crew watching from their place. Oh, so cool. they had probably, oh, I bet, I think she could maybe eight couples. That's neat. Wow. Yeah. So, so the, so, yeah, they were, they were there. So the, the neighbors have parties to watch yeah, from their places. Exactly. That's well, awesome. Well, yes, the, the, they do. That is fun. The yeah, choice was, very you know, true. I, I did my little code. I said there's going to be a sound barrier at 523 in the Fills Valley. She sent back like, Yahoo! <laughs> like, I know the code. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's right. But, but last year was funny because, you know, we had the same thing. But I'd hear cheering from you guys' area, and then over here, and over there. <laughs> I got the biggest kick out of you know. But oh, the tw you there are 27 of the full-size trees out front. Did you hear that? That sounds about right. There are 27. And each one of them has 15 circles of okay. lights on yeah. them. Yeah. So Otherwise, just, you might not have enough lights, or you might have too many. you, you got to get got to get it precise. And they're perfectly spaced on <laughs> bushes. Think about how many times he goes around, 15 times 27, just for those big trees. Yeah. I mean, it's just astounding. It takes him two and a half months to put up the lights. And it takes him a month to put it down and take him down. Yeah, yeah. So that's my story. It's, 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 it's more than a hobby. <laughs> it's I'm not an sure. Obsession. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I even said to him that first time when he told me about the lights. I said, has anybody told, me, told you that you're OCD? And he says, what's OCD? And I said, you. <laughs> you know, I'll look at things and um, people take the whole thing in general and say, yeah, that's nice. But for me, they're like, no, that's not quite right. Because I can look, I can look at a, a tree, and even those things are, you know, uh, six inch spacing. I I don't know why I don't even try. I can see a light bulb out, out of out of how many thousands. From a distance, of light, you can see I can one see, tree uh, has a light bulb out. Well, it's, it's funny. I don't even try, but I can just see oh, that one's out. No, I gotta go fix it. <laughs> no, yeah, but it was just it was really uh, like I said. There's always something. But there's no problem. Huh? No cops this year. No, I was really disappointed. <laughs> you, ready? you know, but I think that was so funny when Mark says he thinks he was just kind of stalling down there anyway. And, you know, yes. but he had to do official duty. And I right. don't blame him. Yeah, know. yeah. I just gotta say, can you let me out at least for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, funny. One of my favorite memories of Dad's lights was the one year that he rented a cherry picker. You know, one of those trucks with the hydraulic arms that can lift you up in a bucket? We used it to put lights in the filbert orchard. Not just, you know, the little trees, but the, the filbert trees themselves. I'm not sure how old I was, but I was young enough to be really impressed by it. We went, I think it was either every other tree or every third tree and Dad did have to use a gas-powered generator to get enough electricity for the lights that year. Are you recording? We are going, whenever you're ready. Stop. So, what am I saying? Are you going to ask me a question? Tell me anything you want to about my dad or his Christmas lights and the traditions we have here for Christmas. I love Papa. He is like, he is, you know what I remember? I met him about a year ago, a little over a year ago. 
And one thing that I memorized about him, he has always most energized person I ever met. And he told me, so we've been in touch for the whole year, and he said, some people in your life for a season, some people for a reason, and some people for a life. So here I am, and I'm hopefully I will get to spend with him as long as God allowed us. And keep those traditions and keep those precious moments and creating memories because ultimately this is all what we have. You know, we cannot we cannot take tangible things with us to uh, heaven, but to create the memories and build a relationship and friendship, meaningful and soulful. That's all what matters, and to be able to give without accepting, expecting anything in back. This is all what I like. You know, Papa is the most genuine person, and I love to go to church with him and worship and cry together because we're so happy uh, seeing other people come to Christ. Uh, ultimately, this Christmas is all about Jesus Christ, and I'm so grateful that at one point Papa, uh, Papa got Jesus Christ, and I got Jesus Christ, and we can share the same faith and uh, worship our God together. That's it. I love Papa. Thank you. You're welcome. Remember the story, the for a, for a season, for a reason story? The statement is, people come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I think somewhere, actually even in scripture, there's something like that. But what that helps is, like, now Kathy has been gone 12 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And the, the pain that you go through at the moment doesn't seem reasonable because it hurts like heck. But as time goes by, you see how all these things have fit in to help developing who you are. Mm -hmm. And without, uh, I guess, going through a divorce, without uh, having a, a death or, and, and parents dying, and, and it was really interesting when Kathy died and two years later, dad dies and two years later, mom dies and two years later, Mike dies. You know, pretty soon you can almost get afraid, but then you realize that each one of these things has um, taught you something. Mm -hmm. And so now, it sounds weird, I can thank God for going through a divorce, getting a death or death. Not that you'd set yourself up for it, mm -hmm. but the, if you come out whole, that's the most important thing. And when you, relate, when you re, uh, rely on him and lean on him, it does make sense in time. Mm -hmm. But it, <laughs> would I sign up for it? <laughs> no, but I went through it. <laughs> Remember the, uh, the first time you started doing lights in the backyard and the, the reason that you started doing that? Can you... Uh, can you mean you... Right, at this place? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, that, so I had been doing for several years beforehand, mm -hmm. you know, the, what we call the front yard, the upper yard, you know, and down the driveway. Mm -hmm. And the house, a lot of the house uh, view was in the backyard. And so I guess just somewhere I, I just kind of clicked and said, well, wait a minute. I'd like to be able to see the lights during the day because, you know, all the other places, you really, you know, you had to sit in the front room to see them. But why shouldn't we have some? And that's when I started doing the whole backyard. Mm -hmm. So, well, now, Kathy, working in the kitchen, I thought, she said, well, why don't you do a little lights in the backyard so I can appreciate while I'm in the I think you're right. And then, and then she, she, she taught me I did a couple. I did yeah, the whole thing. Started she started doing it more and more. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun story because in, in Dad's mind, Christmas was for what people can see with the lights. So people driving up and down the driveway, why put any lights in the backyard behind the house where nobody yep. else can see yep. them? Yep. But, you know, really it's people who are here enjoying your company. It's nice to have the Christmas yep. lights in the backyard too. Exactly, exactly. I always get a kick out of it because I've been doing this so long and I you know, have the lighting of the lights party is uh, our dear friends, John and Sandy Schmidt. Mm -hmm. It's the funniest thing. They come out. They come out each year for the lighting of lights, and she always leaves us. This is the best year ever. <laughs> <laughs> this this year is funny because I did I did a little more of this, a little bit of that, you know, and I changed things all the time. But it was really kind of funny after after lighting the lights. Uh, she was walking away, and she says, 
It's hard for me not to say it, but this is the best year. <laughs> so it wouldn't be an official lighting of the lights without John and Sandy Schmidt. They have been super close friends with Dad for I don't know how long. Oh gosh, so, close to forty years. Yeah, yeah. And we met him. Our our daughters Kathy introduced Danielle to Sarah when they first moved to Tigard. And we didn't meet Steve. The girls were on a track team. And we didn't meet Steve until we were at a track meet. And the girls were doing the long jump. And we met Steve at that point. And that's been. I can still remember what Steve wore. Um, and we talked. Steve and I talk a lot. <laughs> But, you know, it wouldn't be Christmas without coming here to see the lights and um, just friendship, you know, this little guy, he's been around <laughs> forever since he was a little kid. Um, it's well, that, just a big yeah, family. Dad, Dad moved out here, I think, when I was in high school, I think. Oh, yeah, but we never, the big when you lived yeah, over, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but when you lived over in, Ty or when they lived over in Tiger, we went skiing. Oh. Remember when you were just, I mean, you and Brandon were just little. Okay, okay. And so I didn't we took the motor home. Oh, yeah, took the motor home, and, and you guys, guys were all on the camper. bed. And, yeah. Yeah, it's, lots, um, of, lots of fun. And it's fun, yeah, and to have a friend for that many years and still enjoy being around him. Yes, but more than just a friend, you know, it's family, you know, it's mm -hmm. just part of our big family. I think that's a special thing about Dad. He does make people feel like family, so... Yes, yeah. I mean, it's he wonderful. makes everybody feel welcome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's just, he's got a heart of gold, uh, just a huge heart to have all these people here. He, he works months putting lights up. Sandy's one liner. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this That's is the best year out. ever. <laughs> That's right, the best yeah. year ever. That's what everybody, uh, every year is the best year ever. <laughs> anyway, Steve, we love you, buddy. Yeah. Yes, we okay. do. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. You know, when you show um, the lights and people um, smile or whatever, you know, it, it passes on joy. Mm -hmm. And it was funny about how that works, but I would probably never not do it just because of maybe th these three or four stories I'll share. Um, this one that touches me, I think, the most because it's really personal is a lady was driving out to something with her two daughters and they happened to see the lights. And so they drove up and went up down the road and, and saw the lights. And they went, what? And when they went down to the other road and started heading um, west, the daughters say, Daddy has to see these lights. Dad has to see these lights. Okay. And, and they, the mom said, well, we're separated. Um, well, but Dad should see them. And, should see them. And, and she said, well, if you can convince them to go or come out, we'll do it. Well, anyway, I, apparently, somewhere along the line, the girls convinced Dad to come out. And they all went together. And she came in, like it was like January 2nd when I was taking them down, and brought me this velvet bow. And she says, I want to give this to you for the lights. I said, well, you're welcome. She says, you don't understand. And then she told me what I just shared. And she shared, she says, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're talking. And I go, you know, after going through a divorce myself, you know, I, I yeah. choose to believe that yeah. they lived happily ever after, you know. Now, the contrast to that is another even, year. Even just a continued friendship is, is, yeah, is a, absolutely. It's some healing. Incredible if, honor. Right. Yeah. The, the contrast to the story about the lady and the husband getting back together, is one, um, oh, let's just say December 15th, December 20th, that make a difference one there. I just happened to notice um, a car parked just above the property here. And of course, you know, this is a private road, or you know, rural road, I should say a, a dead end. And I thought, well, they're just sitting there watching the lights, you know, taking it in. And they left eventually. And then the next night, it was right there. Same and car. then, the, and then the third night, I go now. Now I'm kind of concerned. Now today, I probably wouldn't do it with the craziness that goes on, but I said I got to go out and just find out what's this all about. But well, just happened to be, when I opened the front door, here was this lady, with three strings of lights, and she says, "I want you to have these." I said, "Well, that's really thoughtful of you." 
And she says, I've been, I've come here the last three, or it's might be the third night. And uh, I want you to have these lights because your lights have given me hope because I've been contemplating suicide. But I just thought, oh my gosh, somebody didn't end their life because of the joy that it got, the lights gave her. And I never forgot that one. With old friends or new ones, or even absent friends. The real Christmas message is one of joy and hope. And then uh, just the last one maybe to share with you, there's a couple more, but this is the last one I share with you. I had a boat for sale and this kid, now kid, young man with a child comes up and looks at it. And uh, he said, I think um, my family caroled you when I was young. And I said, whoa, stop. You have five or six brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. I said, you guys used to have like a suburban or big SUV over you. Yeah. I said, well, how old were you? And he says, I was eight. So anyway, here's this, you know, how much older. Anyway, he bought the boat. I ended up giving him the trailer because it was such a thing. But this one particular night, I just happened to see this older uh, suburban and they pulled up and these kids crawled out, six of them I think, the mom and dad, they come and they, they ring the doorbell and they have cookies and, and candy for us. And then they sing a cappella and we were so overwhelmed, we thought they're the Von Trapp family, you know, from the sound <laughs> of music. It was unbelievable. And they sang us another song and they, you know, give us candy. We were just teared up and we said, you have made our Christmas. We'll never forget that one. I mean, that's probably one of them. And they said, well, you've made ours. But the, the voices, the, oh my gosh, they, they, the harmony. But, you know, like I said, years later, how many years later, I don't know. But here's this guy who buys this little boat from me and he was eight years old, Carol and me you know, That's 28 years earlier, or whatever it would be. So yeah, that would, but, well, I think one cute one, which you brought up is we have filberts here. And so um, I've been nicknamed the Christmas nut. Okay. But, but the other one I think is that um, there've been so many accidents on this corner mm -hmm. that uh, one of the paramedics uh, nicknamed it or gave it a, a, a nickname of Christmas corner. So when there's an accident, they don't say between Shoals and Tile Flat or Shoals and Tile Flat or Shoals and Clark Hill. They just say there's another accident or another, an accident on Christmas Corner. Yeah. And so it's kind of interesting to have uh, that kind of uh, little a landmark. A yeah. landmark, yeah, yeah, a landmark. So it's it's kind of funny, but it, it, it you know, um, it, regardless of all the things, if I didn't do Christmas lights. I just don't think I would feel like I had Christmas. All right, I'm here with Danielle, and she hasn't been on one of our videos. Danielle's my stepsister, and tell me something about Dad and his Christmas lights. Oh my gosh, the Christmas lights have been part of my life since I have lived on this property. Um, I'm literally... <laughs> it's an actually an emotional topic for me because this has been um, a really special place for me since I moved here. He made this place so amazing and I didn't know that he was going to do this Christmas light thing. I had no idea that this was going to be a thing that we did and it has been an incredible experience and my mom and I when we moved out here, I was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do out here? And he... He transformed the place. He did, he did. He made this place so amazing, mm -hmm. Brian. Like he, he... <sighs> I don't wanna get emotional, but he not only embraced me mm -hmm. as his daughter, but he embraced us as a family mm -hmm. and made this place Christmas. And when I'm here, I just feel like it is such a peaceful place. It's just a place that I want to be, and I love it so much. And my mom 
would always love to fill the class to the top of the Christmas trees. We're seeing mm-hmm. that filled right now because I guess I get to drink some of them. But, but this is like one of the most amazing places I can ever be. Mm-hmm. And um, because of our dad and... Yeah. It's special not because of the wonder of the lights. It's special because of the memories and the, the memories, relationships. The memories and the relationships. Yeah. And yeah. I cannot imagine all the energy he puts in. He puts every ounce of himself into this. And in there he's He puts every ounce of himself into this. And I can't imagine anyone who puts any more of himself into Christmas and making things right for everyone else yeah. than our dad. Yeah. We've been here for so many years. Do you have any, any memories of your mom <sighs> that you want to wanna talk about? Kathy? Well, I mean, I think she... Um, my mom was not the easiest person on the planet to be around. <laughs> I will 100% agree with that, but God bless it. She made some great food and she made everything <laughs> really pretty. And um, She was organized and Dad was the uh, yeah, person they to really make the life they, of the party. They balanced, versus, each, yeah. they balanced each other out really well. I just, I miss her and I'm glad that we're all still together. I'm yeah. really glad. Yeah. I'm really glad. I feel like we've been together more, actually, mm-hmm. since um, she's been gone. And <sighs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just um, I am really proud to to call you my brothers. Like you're good guys. You're good guys. You're you're really good guys. And I I want I want people. I want siblings in my life. I do. I do. I do. Yeah. We don't get we don't get together as often as no, we probably we should. You're but right. there's always this space that we have that's uh, you know we can get together whenever we want to really. And we should. Mm-hmm. We should. I was talking about the uh, the story of uh, when your dad bought his first string of lights and, and the, you well, know, that, how that a, impacted you. Yeah, that's the story I was telling you that, that that we had we had bigger means and mostly there wasn't really that many Christmas lights. People who had Christmas lights really were more of a fluence. I mean, because it was just basic needs. Then. Mm-hmm. And, you know, somewhere along like, you know, being a typical kid, because I was to be a seventh grader, so seven plus six is 13. So let's just say about 10 years old or whatever, I said, Dad, can we have, can we have some lights, you know? And nothing happened. But anyway, so uh, in, in 1957, he bought a string of lights, and he and Mike. And I just was on the other side of the street in Dallas there and looked at him going up. And I was just mesmerized by 25 lights. Mm-hmm. And that really set uh, a deal in my heart because I would drive around even you know, when I got my uh, driver's license I'd drive all through Dallas and just uh, stop. Anyway, I still do it. Mm-hmm. The, you know, and especially when I was working downtown Portland, I would take a route, diff, you know, different route this every night lights. to go through just someplace. Because what I found about uh, lights, I, I'm not to be judgmental. This is not my point. But I have found that a person could put up one string of lights with love in the way they do it yeah. versus a dozen, a bunch of them where they kind of throw them up. And that's, if that, I mean, that's okay because that's their Christmas. And so to me, it's not the number of lights. It's the care, you know, say the care and the love uh, that you put into it. I don't even want to, I don't do it because of love. I just do it. You know, I mean, and maybe it is because of love and, and, and sharing and, and gratitude and all the other things. But yeah, I, it's, it's funny. I, I'll never forget that. And Kathy made a, 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 a good comment one time. Sometimes less is more. It's not as good as something that's just crisp and look. I mean, mm-hmm. and she always appreciated what I did because it says it's crisp. Well, you know, I, 
I, I do what I think is going to be nice. And the funny one, though, is I think about what I'm going to do starting now for next year. Okay. And I can tell you, just even this year, I tried something. Something that, that needs to be different. That needs to be a little different. And I have undone it twice to make it right. Mm. Because I just thought, okay, this would be right here. But, I mean, the figurines, the, the only thing that's really kind of similar is the true nativity scene that's kind of meant to you know, be uh, concise and bring the, the whole thing together. But other than that, in my mind, I just always want it to be different. You know, different colors or different this or how somebody sat here or this thing over here or that thing. But, yeah, I just never get that. Sometimes I look at something and says, you know what? Rather than pretty, that looks cluttered. Yeah. And sometimes, like her comment was, sometimes less is more. Because if you give something that is so busy, you know, yeah, it's Christmas. So you've got all kinds of light. Yeah, that means Christmas. But maybe you didn't really take in the subtle beauty of how that color and that shape, you know, and probably most people don't care. But it's something that just kind of comes over me and says, yeah, that's just a little too cluttered. Or that's not, that color contrast isn't, you know. Well, most people say, what do you mean color contrast? That's just Christmas. You show, you, you know. <laughs> yeah, you mean, yeah. A, you know. You, you know what you're doing. You, you know, you can appreciate the finer, finer well, details. Yeah, see, you're an artist. I'm not. I'm, I, you know, my nickname for me is Claude Hopper, you know. I just kind of learned by going. But I didn't realize this because even last year in our, our Bible study group, somebody talked about this and they brought up that, you know, my, you're artistic. And I said, but they brought up about the flowers, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and then the lights, you know. And I go, well, I don't think I'm artistic. Well, that's not, I guess, how somebody else views it. And to me, what's really the greatest gift in life at all, that some, somebody looks at you as something that God brings out, say you're artistic. I never thought about myself as that. But that's their view, but that's the view that God wanted them to see who, who I am. Mm -hmm. And so the gift and the glory goes to God. Yeah. You know, and that's just the simplicity of, of life, really, is if we get ourselves out of the way and just be authentically who we are, we can't fail. Mm -hmm. We cannot fail if we're just what God made us. Mm -hmm. Now, you're talking, I'm giving you some uh, words of wisdom for a guy who's now lived 77 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I noticed your, your cross out in the field seems a little more separated from everything else that's, you know, Christmassy around the, the property. Well, it's, it's not in exactly the same place. It has two, it has two things, is that is the center of it. Like, you know, the cross is, is the reason, you know, for the season, as they say. So you see it as a backup, but you never forget, what's the real? So if you look at that scene, and you can see the angel. Now, the angel wasn't there last year, like okay. that, okay? okay. So you, you see the chippy scene, you see the wise men, and you see the shepherds. Now you see this angel. And where does it all come from? That cross. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about where that cross is, when everything else goes off, the cross, the cross, out, the cross, cross, the cross can stay on. Okay. To, and in fact, is my neighbors, two of them, the um, uh, Tina and Dave Hartmeyer, and both the Choi's, Lucinda and Mike, have commented about. I've left that cross up a couple times throughout the year. Okay. And what's neat is the foliage is off of the filberts a lot. Mm -hmm. So in the you midst, in the midst of night where I just now turn it towards the highway a little bit. People go through, just a silent message is, the cross is always there for you. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's, that's why the cross. The cross actually is kind of 24-7, 365. Yeah. There's always, it's always on somewhere on the property. Mm -hmm. And I always gotta, I mean, I did because that's what I feel is a silent message is that, you know, somebody driving by here, you know, 11 o'clock or two or three in the morning, you know, uh, who knows what kind of happiness or troubles or whatever. Yeah. But what if they just see that cross, you know, and God uses them and just say, hey, um, why don't you talk to me? Well, it is It is a ministry, you know, the Christmas lights. Really, that's your, uh, that is kind of your ministry, I think. Well, you know, um, I had a pretty rough uh, childhood of being criticized of me else. And I just remember at nine years of age, you know, something going on and it wasn't really pretty. And I remember saying, I don't care 
what's going to happen in my life, I am going to be happy. And I realized that that um, pledge or that, um, whatever the right word is, or that conviction, because it wasn't a happy time, mm -hmm. but I basically just said, I will be happy. And I think that's still, uh, you know, that a lot of things happened to me that haven't been pleasant. But I think that's, just, that's the core. And the core of besides that is Christ. Well, I guess like I said, I didn't, I've never thought it was a ministry. I just thought it was a love. But I guess it is a ministry because a couple other people have, have, have not shared the same thing. You know, so. That's pretty special. Yeah. Uh, people I keep asking me. It's, what, it's special to be to be able to touch other people with what you do. I mean, yeah, it, you know, that's, and, that's, that's, that's really and And you know, when you're, when you're doing... It's meaningful. Right. Yeah. When you're doing God's work, most of the time, you don't know you're doing God's work. It's when you aren't performing. It's just when you are. You know, when you do something that touches somebody else, the glory goes to God because it's going through you. And that's the greatest blessing that I can ever have when somebody comes back to me and said... You know, I when you said, you know what you said about this thing and whatever, and I kind of remember the conversation. It wasn't at all what, you, you know, it wasn't at all what I said. It's what he what, said what they heard through me. What they needed to hear. Yeah, that. and that's the greatest gift you can give God. And so you know that uh, you're here for a purpose. Now, I know you always have the nativity scene in one half of the yard, and then the, the fun with the Santas and the snowmen and the reindeer, mm -hmm. kind of in the other part of the yard. Is that what? What made you decide to do that, or has that always been kind of the, that was, the vision? Yeah, yeah, that no, that was just I mean, here, here's what's real, and here's why you know is the fun part. Yeah, and it's, I want to keep those separate. And the same thing, if you look at the, the lights in the orchard, the centerpiece is an exhibit scene. Mm -hmm. And if you see this year, particularly, if you come up and you see Christ and the things, there's a couple little you know things that open up the door, but then all of a sudden you see things related to Christianity. Mm -hmm. As soon as you pass that, you can go into the fun and the artificial, backed up by the nativity scene, then the, I shouldn't say artificial, but I mean, you know, the, what people a lot of mm -hmm. times just, mm -hmm. and so you get a, a reminder is um, that, hey, uh, know what it's all, have fun, enjoy, and, and love Christmas as, as, you know, as a kid and excitement. But somewhere along the line too is, Bring it's probably hard for people to bring in Christ as as hard as much as just fun, mm -hmm. but not to forget that what's the real meaning of Christmas. Yeah. So that's why you'll see it definitely blocked. This is this, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you guys will pick up on that. Good. And then you'll always still see too, either a movie light or a twinkly light, just around the nativity scene. Um, in the front yard and that is the bring focus that there's one way for eternity and that's through Christ and you'll see a little walkway right up that little scene yeah. of baby Jesus yeah. and you know, we can have all this fun and whatever and that's why I try to bring out that little twinkly or sometimes I just have a gold only mm -hmm. or something specifically uh, you'll see out there right now a twinkly white light mm -hmm. that's around it's very subtle and that's the, the path through or for eternity is through that little baby nice yeah so i mean I, that's i've always done something to bring the focus right there that's that's the one
Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best year ever. 